to the first episode of Scotch Tales. I'm Ian. I'm Holly. And today we are reviewing Odd Big Ten. So Odd Big Ten, pretty classic. Um, if you're into Scotch, you probably have tried it or at least heard of it. Um, so it's an Isla. Uh, so it's from the Isla region of Scotland. It is a single malt Scotch, and it is peated and. Fairly heavily peated, I'd yeah, say. Yeah, I'd say so. There's very few that are more heavily peated than Arctic. So it's kind of seen as a classic Isla, if you want to... It's got quite a cult following. Yes, that is true. Um, so we've kind of got to say anything too bad about it. Um, otherwise we might get a few messages. Um, so the first thing you see is it's incredibly light. Yeah, kind of straw coloured, I'd say. It's, it's a white wine, I'd say, yeah. it's probably thing it most resembles certainly much more than what you traditionally associate as whiskey colour. Definitely, yeah, very, very pale. Um and aged ten years. So uh ex bourbon barrels. Yep. Uh so all ex bourbon barrels, there's nothing else going on in there. Um yeah. So when you first met like, the first thing you get is a massive hit of peat. Yes. Yeah, you'd be expecting if you sort of knew any of the background of it. Um, and then, I'd say second that is the brininess. Definitely. I get just brine, salt. Like standing on the coast in the pouring rain kind of smell. On a pebble beach. Yeah, that. And that sounds ridiculous, but seriously, <laughs> smell this and you will agree. Very salty. A bit of seaweed in there. Yep, a little bit of seaweed. Uh, mossiness of the peat. Do you want to talk about a little, little bit about what peat is? So peat is basically bog. It's the simplest way to put it. It's sort of decaying, rotting, like leaves and all that that's amassed over thousands, tens of thousands of years. Uh, it's then cut out in big slabs, dried and burnt because that's all there was to burn in Scotland originally. Yes, yeah, so that's what gives peated whiskies like our big, the classic smoky, kind of very savoury. But it's not a traditional smoky. No, it's I'd say peat and smoke are two very different things. Yeah, okay. If you, if you are used to smelling, I don't know, like a wood smoked fish or something. It's not a similar kind of smoke at all. Pea is very different. It's very earthy. Yes. Like damp ground. Yeah. So I don't actually get to drink this anymore. In a minute. Uh, but then, once you get past that initial hit, because now when I'm noticing this, you sort of don't notice it almost. You sort of acclimatise mm -hmm. to it. And so now I'm getting more the crisp apple. Like a raw cooking apple, I'd say. It's sort of how I, it's, no, it's not a sweet apple. Quite yeah, tart. Definitely apple. getting quite fruity now. Um, maybe dried fruit, like a like dried apricot. Yeah, yeah, I could get dried apricot. And then there is also, a, I'd say, a dried fishiness to it as mm -hmm. well. Yeah, definitely a, a bit of meatiness to it. Yeah. Savory, it's a I very savoury whisky. You know, if you're used to Speyside sherry bombs, this is a whole different ballgame. Yeah. This is, yeah, this isn't sweet in any way. No. There's, I mean, there's hints of sweetness hiding in the back there, but they are heavily masked. Okay, I'm gonna drink it. I'll drink that. Yeah. So again, it's that brininess, mm. I'd say it's the first thing that hits you when you taste it. It's a real salty, savoury whiskey. And that brininess is mostly from the casks being stored near the coast on an island in Scotland where, surprise surprise, it's very windy <laughs> and seawater gets blown onto it constantly. Yeah, it's very savoury. 
Um, so yeah, like you said, if you're expecting something like a, a sherry cask, it, it's not that. It's a it's completely different drink. Um, I'd say it's barbecue nights. Yeah. I not like barbecue sort, like that sort of barbecue, but like standing on a outside in the rain. If you're like American, you burgers. won't know this type of barbecue, okay? This is a British barbecue smell, you okay? Know that. This is an, it's pissing it down, but I'm having a barbecue today. I'm holding an umbrella over myself while I burn some sausages. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's talk about underneath that smoky and a bit of, and that briny. Yeah, again, you, you acclimatise to it to an extent after a couple of, couple of sips and actually if you go back to notes that you do get other notes coming through mm. do I get almost a hint of floral on this yeah a, a very faint floral on it. I can't be any more specific than floral which I know is <laughs> quite annoying but I don't know flowers well enough yeah there definitely is a floral on it but like you said it is it's in the background and a bit of lemoniness I would say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, quite citrusy. On the taste, again, that, that tart fruit kind of taste, so yeah. cooking out. Not quite before. ripened fruit is maybe one of the best ways to describe mm -hmm. it. Like an unripe plum. <laughs> what? That's what it tastes like. Okay. <laughs> I don't think I've ever tried an unripe plum personally. So I you're, no, you're not missing out. <laughs> um, this is. Yes. And there is a sweetness coming through, and it's almost toffee like. Yeah, I'd say toffee, maybe butterscotchy. Yeah, it's got real depth to the sweetness. It's not just sugar. Yes. Yeah. Potentially like salted caramel type. Mm, my favourite. I'm obsessed with everything sort of caramel. Quite rich. Very rich. It's, you know, it sticks on your tongue, it's oily. Yeah, so you get that oiliness from when it is smoked, um, when it's peated, it picks up an oily note that will stick your tongue, cling to your mouth, and so that flavour stays behind for a lot longer. Definitely lingers. Yeah, which and that personally I like because one of the worst things for me is when you have a whiskey, you think, oh, that tastes really good, and then two seconds later the taste is completely gone. Oh, it definitely lingers on the tongue. And this is 46%. So it's. It's not a particularly high one, it's. I mean, it's slightly higher than your average spirit i guess you mm -hmm. know most gins most vodkas and that are around 40. most of your basic blended with these and i don't mean that in a bad way <laughs> i just mean sort of the cheaper ones where it's more aimed at mass production they tend to water down to 40. um if you go into a pub and you get the house spirit it'll be 40. so this is slightly stronger mm -hmm. but it's not it's not massively, I it's, don't think. You're not, uh, it's not going to knock you out if you're a spirit drinker. Exactly. If you're used to drinking spirits, this is It's not a car so. strength 65%. No. Well, that blows your head off. I mean, if you've never drunk spirits before and all you drink is orange squash, it's going to be a tasty habit. But, you know. <laughs> but if, if, if drink, you are that person that's only drunk orange squash, why are you watching this? <laughs> please, please tell me. I'm really confused. We're, we're not that interesting. <laughs> <laughs> we're really not. Alright, so I'm just going to say, Ardbeg 10 is one of, if not my favourite whiskey. Mm -hmm. um, I got this bottle about a month ago, <laughs> and as you can see, it's just over half gone already. I don't see that lasting another month. Fortunately, it's not too expensive. In the UK, it's around £40 if you look around and find it on offer somewhere, and because there's so many places nowadays to get whiskey. You can usually find it on offer somewhere, it's quite a common one. Mm -hmm. Not one you've really got to hunt around a lot for. And even if it's not on offer, get it. 
get this whiskey. I'm not being paid to say that, trust me. If, if I was, then I'd have a lot more than one bottle of it. But um, yeah, get this whiskey if you haven't already tried it. It's, it's definitely worth it. I wouldn't say it's my favourite whiskey. I think I love it slightly less than you do. Possibly. But it, it's very different to, I think even most islas, it's, it's more savoury and bright. Yeah, if you're used to, okay. a lot of people will try and compare the Arbe 10 and the Lafroy 10. Personally, I don't think there's a comparison to be made. Um, sorry, Lafroy fans, please don't unsubscribe straight away. Um, but yeah, I think Arbe is miles more savoury. I think they're completely different tastes. Yeah, I don't think it's actually a fair thing to try and compare. I think it's like trying to compare a sherry cask finish to a 25 year old Glenfiddich or something. It's just not the same whiskey, don't try and compare. So. Good Isla? Very good Isla. A good one to kind of really get into peat? If, yeah, if you wanted to explore peat, probably, if you sort of had a slightly peated ones, uh, you get a few slightly peated, you get some peated highlands and stuff like that, but Isla really steps up a notch and mm -hmm. I'd say, oh, I think from what I've tried, which isn't a massive amount, but from what I've tried, yeah, I think is a real step up from most in terms of peatiness. Probably not the best whiskey to give someone that's never drunk whiskey before. <laughs> if you'd they, given me this a little while ago, I would have been they, like, They no. will probably hate you. I mean, there's probably one in 50 people that have never drunk whiskey before, but have an Ardbeg 10 as their first whiskey, and they'll instantly fall in love. You have their favourite curries of Vindaloo, and... They all only drink espresso coffees, and they like strong flavours. Like they're straight vodka, but... and, you know, they, they'd be the one that to, to give this to, but... Yep. If they quite like something quite sweet. <laughs> yeah, if they get a, you know, caramel latte... <laughs> extra, I don't know, I've never ordered one of the extra toffee or something, I have literally no idea if that's a thing. Um, Taking you to spark Starbucks. <laughs> don't. Um, yeah, they only ever drink things like that and they like quite mild flavours. Probably not the best one to introduce them to. Build up to it. Okay. But a good whiskey, if you're looking to get into pee, we'll definitely recommend this one. So, on, so, to, on to the, the second part of the video, the cocktail. And the cocktail we are making today is... Blood and Sand. So, do you want to explain a little bit about what Blood and Sand is while yeah, I get okay. the stuff? So, Blood and Sand, named after the 1922 20, film of the same name, um, first appeared in... It's going to be 19... nice and professional here and just turn the tray the right <laughs> way around. First appeared in the 1930s Savoy Cocktail book. Um, Pretty basic cocktail to make. Uh, one of the more famous Scotch cocktails. There's not hundreds of, of cocktails that use Scotch. It's not like gin or vodka. Um, yeah. Even bourbon. Exactly. A lot of whiskey cocktails are traditionally made with American whiskey, so bourbon, some rice. And we will be doing some of them, but for our first one, we thought we'd stick to Scotch. Yeah. And um, yeah. So, so it's really simple. It's got four ingredients. So you've got your Scotch, so our big ten for us. Sherry liqueur, it's traditionally made with a uh, liqueur called Sherry Herring. I couldn't find that, so we have Tesco's finest cherry brandy liqueur. They're really posh. They're really posh. Uh, then sweet vermouth and fresh orange juice. And make sure you strain your fresh orange juice because um, I didn't on the rehearsal and a bitty cocktail is not what you want. <laughs> um, if you really can't be bothered, you can use yeah, orange juice. But I would say that the fresh orange juice does really improve the flavour. Um, it's it has got a very different flavour to kind of from concentrate stuff. So uh, very simple. It's equal portions every ingredient. Um, so I've got ice in the shaker already, and I'm just going to put in. So we're doing 25 mil. Um, if you're using ounces, that's about an ounce. Yeah, an ounce is 28 mil, I think. So you're pretty safe to just call it the same. So 
So traditionally, this was made with blood oranges, uh, just because they're slightly yeah. redder. Possible to get a blood oranges. Yeah, Seriously. in, I would imagine in a place like California and that, it's probably not that hard to get a blood orange. Well, Tesco's just have them, them. Yeah. and that's my version of impossible to get hold of. Uh, so I then sweep the mousse. You've got red in it already. Fine. It's, <laughs> we get a lot of that here, it's fine. It's not how it's meant to be, but it's fine. <laughs> and finally... The orange juice. There's no point in making cocktails that you make once in a lifetime because you can't actually find any ingredients. So we have a quite make do attitude. That is the girliest cocktail shaker ever, by the way. Well, to it's be yours. So <laughs> you could buy me a proper one. I think you did it. Um, so then, after you shake it all up. Straight into your glass. Traditionally, I think it's a coupe. We don't have any of those, so we're using a martini glass. See, that's Pretty red enough. Similar effect. So, should we talk a bit about why we're using our baby? Yeah, this? sure. So, this is traditionally a very sweet cocktail. Yeah, it actually so, went out of popularity for a long time because it's just too sweet for traditional Scotch drinkers if you use. You've got cherry brandy, Scotch. sweet vermouth. Orange juice. juice, they're all sugary flavours. And if you're a classic Scotch drinker, you're not that likely. You don't want to generalise because I love Scotch and I love a Cosmite. So I'm probably one of those people that you're likes probably a bit the only of one. <laughs> you, on the other hand, I don't like sweet things. Really. <laughs> well, that's not strictly true, but basically. Uh, and then finish off with a bit of an orange froth, just spread it over glass, brim it. And drop it in. It is that simple. Not a difficult one. Don't feel like we're challenging you massively. I'm no, it's designed to be nice and simple for so, the first one. It is sweet, but that art bag stands up really well and you do get that smokiness coming through, which I actually think really improves on, say, a classic blended scotch in this. Yeah, see, if we were having this with, say, a monkey shoulder, mm -hmm. the traditional, it's a blended scotch, it's not particularly smoky or anything, that would be too sweet for me. But the Ardbeg just gives it that bit of balance, mm -hmm. and yeah, it's, I'm not really a cocktail fan, which may make you wonder why we're doing <laughs> this, but um, I'm more the whiskey side. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a good cocktail. Um, a little bit too drinkable. <laughs> yes, it's just it down pretty quickly. And I do really think that fresh orange, if you can be bothered to I mean, squeeze an orange, it, it's that not hard. the hardest. Um, it does make it, a massive difference. If you realise you have all these ingredients except for <laughs> fresh orange, and quite why you have cherry liqueur, sweet vermouth. <laughs> Our bag kicking around and you don't have an orange, then, but you know, if that's the case, just use some orange juice, it'll do the same job. It's, it's sweet, but yeah, that our bag does really come through. You just get that brininess and that smokiness just on the edge, um, which stops it being, stops that sweetness really lingering on your tongue. Yeah, it, it stops, stops it the soy. sweetness overpowering. It brings a balance that is needed, I think. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, yeah, this is a very sweet cocktail. Um, if you don't like sweet cocktails, uh, next week we're going to be doing an Old Fashioned, which, yes, I know is traditionally made with rye, now it's made with bourbon more often. We're going to do it with Monkey Shoulder. Which is one of our favourite blended scotches. Yeah, it's, it's um, very common now, it's really exploded over the past couple of years. You can find it in most supermarkets. Very different to our bag, so oh, yeah, we'll oh be, yeah, completely different. We'll be having a look at some of the flavours in this one. We've taken a sweet cocktail and we've added savoury. Next time, we're taking a more savoury question mark cocktail with a sugar cube in, with a sugar cube in, and we're adding a sweeter whiskey. I'll give you drinking this. So, yeah, join us next week for that. Um, thank you very much for watching and um, enjoy. And here you go.